We also have another guest in Lagos uh, to also help shed light on this issue. Coyote. Well, thank you, Mark. We've since been joined by Mr. Martin Onovo, who's a petroleum engineer, uh, former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party in the 2015 election. That's NCP. Also made a run in the 2011 election as well. He joins us live in our Lagos studio. Good morning, uh, Mr. Onovo, and thank you for joining us on Sunrise Daily. Good morning. Well, subsidy is a lot of things to different people. We've seen the positions, for example, of the presidential candidates in the build-up to the elections. But what is this petrol subsidy? the removal or not? What is it to you? Well, the, the first thing is uh, we shouldn't be in this situation. So we should first blame ourselves that we even got to this point where we are in the top 10 uh, oil exporting countries in the world. And then we are, we are also members of OPEC. And then we have to import petroleum products. That is a dysfunctionality. There is no way to justify that. And funnily, we've been here for very many years. We're here for 30 years. And that shows our lack of capacity to address minor challenges. Right. So uh, you look, you've looked at the years up until this moment. But clearly, we need to forge ahead. It's important to learn from the past. I mean, that's how you don't keep making the same mistakes. Exactly. Again. But particularly about the subsidy uh, removal, which looks like it's inevitable anyway. This current administration has given a terminal date to it. Again, we've heard the presidential candidate seeming to speak uh, from the same side of the mouth, saying, well, this is our position on subsidy. I feel it should be removed. Do you agree with that? Because it looks like, again, no. labor is, is, is divided. So you don't agree with no, the removal no. of subsidy? Uh, interestingly, uh, when we ran, we gave the right answers. And all Nigerians know the right answers. I insist. Even the current ruling party knows the right answers. The right answers to what exactly? To the situation. It's domestic production. It's domestic production. Why do you export crude oil? You have four existing refineries. Existing. It's not proposed. You have old Portacot, new Portacot, Wari, Kaduna. Existing. Now, you, you keep them idle, you go to import, what do you think can be more wasteful than that? And I think that that's the point that has been raised. I mean, listening to uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Billy Skilly Harry and then the, uh, the, 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 the head of Pengerson as well saying that, well, we feel it should be removed, but the question is what should be done about it. But let's explore the point. No, no, no. We, we, so if we, we do not support removal. You do it, not support it, removal. It doesn't so, make sense. So let's explore the point about the uh, refineries, which you talked about, that should be working. And I think there's a general consensus on that, that we need those refineries working. Again, how to go about it is the question. But if the refineries No, work, that's not a challenge anywhere. Well, some say N that. Niger Republic is refining. No, Ghana no, I'm is saying refining. how to go about it. Should, you fix the refineries, the exactly. maintenance so issue. Should the government be in charge of those refineries? Should they be in <laughs> private hands? That's what I mean. <laughs> These are neoliberal complications. Refineries, the refineries belong to us. Right. They are public uh, entities. We can operate them. We should be operating them. So but, it should be government operated. Oh, definitely. Okay, so what happens then? Because they it's government crude. owned. Okay, so they buy and crude. And if Kayode wants his own refinery, well and good. Kayode get a license, go and build yours. That's okay. So they buy crude, for example. Let's walk through the process so Nigerians can understand. So they buy crude at the international markets. What, $100, 120 Whether or not it's actually gotten from Nigerian uh, soil or not, they still have to pay the international price. Yes. Then it is refined. Do you want government to still be paying subsidy for the petrol that gets into the tanks, the fuel, uh, the generating sets of Nigerians, or it should be determined by the market variables? That's what I'm telling you. You, ha you have joined, jumped to the, to the uh, top. You, you, you are, you're avoiding the fundamentals. The first question is, is this imported petroleum product or domestically refined petroleum product? I'm saying you have no reason to import. So you've made that point. My point is about subsidy regime. Subsidy is principally for imported products. And let me tell you, do not justify this error because it looks like there's a mob mentality now. The majority wants to move in that direction. It's a wrong direction. You've done it over 20 times. 
in the last 40 years. Which one? The removal of Sokka? Oh, yes. You removed it. The last one was 2016. And you celebrated. But I, still have, I still have the celebration. as we have it now. Because so you don't hard. understand the economics. Let me explain it to you. Once you remove subsidy today, inflation follows you. Do you agree? If inflation follows you, devaluation follows you. You will need more subsidy. That is what you have been doing. So you agree that subsidy is still on? Yes, clearly. Okay, because you as said long it was, as you're importing, removed. no, no, no. As long as you're importing, it's very wasteful. It's very wasteful, and it has multi dimensions of multiple dimensions of waste. There's the waste of the investment you made in your refineries. They are not cheap. There is the waste of paying 67 billion naira in salaries per year to people who don't produce anything. So there are multiple dimensions of waste, and that's why you must not do the wrong thing in the first instance. And that's what we do in Nigeria. We do a wrong thing, we ignore the wrong thing we have done, we start overanalyzing how we can build on a wrong thing. But you don't build on a wrong foundation. You correct the foundation. That's the right thing to do in engineering. So I'm, I'm trying to really follow the trend so we can get Nigerians to have a good understanding. So uh, the government says we're going to remove subsidy. The incoming administration well, the decision has been made even before it comes on board anyway, and the presidential candidate, now president-elect, has been clear on the subsidy regime, what the decision would be like. So my question is this, we have the Dangote refineries up, uh, we have some work on Nigeria's refineries as well. Are you saying that we should allow the market forces to decide how much we buy petrol eventually when they are up? Or what exactly are you saying that government should still try to subsidize for the poor? Because you've made your position clear in previous times. So I want to know if you've changed that position. No, the position cannot change. It's a correct and validated position. So subsidies the, should continue. The alternative position has been tried over 20 times. Before 1973, it was eight Kobo per liter. Kobo, not Naira. I know you're thinking Naira. It was eight Kobo per liter. When uh, President Obasanjo came to power, it was 20 naira per litre. Naira, that was 1999. When he left, it was, I think, 75 naira per litre. Yaradua returned it to 65. So Yaradua has the same uh, kind of perspective we have because we oppose the increase. Yaradua returned it to 65 because the last increase Obasanjo did was from 65 to 75. This current government removed it in 2016 when Dr. Kachuku was a petroleum minister. And the media celebrated it as usual, and we laughed. Ignorant celebration. And now you want to remove it again, and I'm telling you, no, no. So you record this. When you say it was removed, it's back now. The government is still I just explained to you why it comes back. Exactly. So, no, it's important to put that in context <laughs> so we don't think subsidy has been removed. It was and, removed. But it's back now. But because it's economically naive to do that that's why i just like i explained listen you increase you remove subsidy today price increases inflation catches up with you devaluation follows your inflation it's an imported product all this argument will not be here if it was domestic production so we have countries for example that refine locally let's take the u.s for example the price of gasoline as it is called is like a dollar per liter, like over $3 per gallon. But since we do liter here, let's talk liter. So if we were to convert that into Nigerian Naira, that would be at least over 700. And, and that's a picture being painted, that once subsidy is removed, the price of petrol might be at that. I know Pengerson was saying, let it be between 360 and 400. But I'm saying that if it is removed eventually, and then we start buying petrol, would you want the price to be at that range, 700? Or government should still make up for the difference, so Nigerians can maybe pay that 300 or 200. That's the question I'm trying to put to you. My, my emphasis is that the difference is made by domestic production and importation. If, if the Dangote plant is running and the four existing public refineries are running, or even privatized, if that makes you more comfortable, but they are domestic, then you have competition. Nobody needs any subsidies anymore. This subsidy is necessary because of the fundamental dysfunctionality 
of importing what you produce. It's right. that simple. So government, Nigerians can then buy petrol for whatever We can price. buy it for whatever price it is. 700, it, it's even if it's a thousand. Naira. Even if it's a thousand. But if you're using international market prices today, what you just need to do is benchmark it with uh, diesel. It's going to be in that same range. So 1,000, you think that is fair for Nigerians? It won't be now. That's, you see what you're trying to uh, impose. It's, it's not right. No, no. I, I, you, I'm you trying to get you You can't impose a price regime for imported product, which is a dysfunctionality. You can't impose that price regime on domestic produced product. No, I gave you the example of the U.S. that refines locally. In fact, Ghana to an extent refines locally. They have a 45,000 uh, barrels per day refinery. And the price of petrol in Ghana today is about $1.50. That's over a thousand naira or thereabouts in Ghana. So I'm saying that that might be the reality for Nigerians. Do you expect government to augment it? And I'll try to read something you said uh, in times past about this subsidy regime. And you said that with superinflation, undue pressure on naira, massive unemployment, poor transportation network across the country, removal of oil subsidy will cause drastic economic hardship. Clearly, in the country. Yes, once you, and that's what I'm trying to explain by that uh, triangular relationship. That once you increase, you have inflation. So if we allow the prices, because you said that Nigerians can pay 700, won't we have a situation? No, the economic why are hardship? you imposing 700, which is about the cost when you import? That's what I'm saying. You have to no, distinguish you countries that that refine locally. No, it's not the same economic regime. It's the same. Crew. No, it's not the economic regime. It's hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not the same. It's not the same uh, regime. Now, before now. Let us go to the Abacha time. Abacha increased to 11 naira. Yes. After he had determined that the cost was about 5 naira, 38 kobo. And the difference was being given to PTF. Don't you remember? Petroleum Trust Fund. That was what Abacha did. So that the price is high doesn't mean that's the cost. Abacha deliberately over increased so that he will have money for PTF. So it was like a tax. So don't bring those uh, scenarios you're painting. No, I'm, I'm giving you yeah. real life scenarios. No, 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 actually, no, no, real no, no, life no don't bring those scenarios. It doesn't apply because in many countries there's a petroleum tax. That's a different thing. That's a different thing. What I'm saying is that use the, if you are domestically producing, it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot more beneficial because domestic production increases your GDP, reduces the cost of your product, does not trigger this inflation we're talking about. Which is why everybody's scared. Mm, so what price do you see it uh, going to if we were to refine locally? Because you don't seem to agree with this 700, 1,000 bands. No, because those bands you're talking about are bands for imported product. So understand that. No, I gave you the example of the U.S. And I'm telling you many countries have a petroleum tax. Importing many countries petrol. have a petroleum tax. Exactly. So you so, can't use that logic. So what price band do you suggest? Right you think now, it will be? no, once you dictate the price of crude oil, hmm? The cost will be about double that because uh, in the value chain, product and refining are about 50-50. So the simple rule of thumb estimate you can do is use your crude oil price, double it as total cost, and then divide it per liter. Do you have a figure in mind? We need to do the arithmetic. I thought you'll have done that. Being, I mean, you followed this for no, because the prices change every day. So why do you want to do that? So as of the last time you did it, did you have like a, a price? The last time, no, it depends on the date. We did it when we are running for election. So that's 2015. Yes, okay. we did it when we are running for so election, you, and then to... it was about 48 naira. Oh, I see. And don't forget, because the arithmetic you're doing is too simplistic. One, the price is variable. Two, exchange rate is variable. So you have to only do it for giving data. I, I think you're Otherwise, actually, you have to be doing it every minute. I think you're also speaking to the point made about you know, crude being regulated by Forex. So they buy it uh, for a certain price, exactly. regardless where it is exactly. refined. And they have to make profit. If you're but, producing, but, but the Nova, game just, changes. Just a moment. The, the conversation is getting more interesting, but we need to go to break. Sure. We'll also bounce this off our guest in the Abuja studio, just so Nigerians can understand what to expect and how to brace up for this. Don't forget, government plays a huge role as well, and I imagine they're listening to this. So that's in a moment. Uh, let's Stay wind on Mr. Onova now. And just to uh, put, put in perspective the, uh, the, the, the price of petrol in the U.S., uh, as you said earlier on. In fact, the U.S. government still subsidizes. In fact, the Environmental and Energy Study Institute found that the U.S. government alone spends about $20 billion every 
year on direct fossil fuel subsidy and the price is still at about one dollars and I'd like to get your thoughts on this so June has been set as a deadline in court are you suggesting that the government holds off on that deadline and sorts out the refineries let's get local production up before we can then talk about it. is that what you're suggesting excellent excellent you will not continue in this fundamental dysfunctionality of importing what you produce and continue to do superficial economic analysis during the break we just did a simple uh, arithmetic 70 dollar per barrel 460 naira to a dollar and we came to 400 naira that's the official exchange rate yes yeah so 460 naira per dollar 70 dollar per barrel we just did it and we came to 400 naira so but if you deregulate under this importation regime you're going to hit this 800 mark because it is wasteful it is inefficient it is it is naive and no one else behaves like that if you are so incompetent you don't know what to do look at your fellow opec members what they do nigeria should actually be exporting products and when I ran for president in 2015, that was the agenda we promoted. That we will increase domestic refining past domestic consumption to the point that we export. And the market is here in the West Coast. So we cannot continue thinking destructively and think we can make progress. You are importing from people who are refining. Why don't you export? Why don't you refine and export? And then you grow your national revenue. That was the agenda we sold. That's the right thing to do. And everybody knows, including this regime that has wasted eight years, because they documented it and they signed it. And they asked that they be held accountable. And I have a copy of the document. And their national chairman signed it. Unfortunately, we didn't hold them accountable. So I, I think also it's important to uh, clear so people don't get false hopes and think that, okay, if this is done, then this is how much we'll buy petrol. And, you know, uh, Dr. Billy Gillis Harry actually said that. It, it won't be nice, and I think you agreed, to actually put a price to it, even though, oh, you, already, he's right. even he's though right. you already put a price to it. But no, but I, I said at $70 per barrel, 460 because those are the principal variables. But I've given you the example again, and I'll keep mm -hmm. saying that, because the, the crude industry is regulated by international prices. The equipment that will be used for the refineries, they are not produced in nigeria you have to pay you know the international price for it the crude oil as well all That's of those things problem. no i'm just saying that if we were to do our local refining as it ought to be and you've put a price of what 405 wouldn't that be giving people false hope no 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 no. the price is determined at 70 dollar per barrel i know, I know as of now if, you were... if any of those things change and you know it changes daily crude price changes daily so if it increases beyond $70 per barrel, you expect an increase. If exchange rate increases to 800 naira per, 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 per dollar, it also changes. So as and today, that's why we determined it at $70 six, per barrel good. So as of today, when it's $70 per barrel, yes. again, to put it in perspective for yes. Nigerians listening, why isn't the price of petrol in the U.S. that is even subsidized 50 cents per liter? Why will it be 50 cents per liter? I mean, 405 naira. You're using your own naira exchange rate for, uh, for, for, Mr. Mr. Nobu, for, for, for when, when last did you buy, get dollar for 460 naira? No, but many, many get it. The CBN gives many, many organizations. If you qualify, you get. What are you saying? I'm, I'm saying that when last did you as a business person try to get that? And did you get No, but I, I don't try to get because I'm not importing and, and I believe in domestic production. And do you know anybody who has gotten access to oh, that as importer? What, what do you mean? As an many. Importer. Oh yes, Zibian gives 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 money at. What do you mean? It'll be interesting to get more many, details many on that. Many, many gets. But it's quite interesting the conversation we've had, and clearly the coming days will be quite interesting. So it's important to give Nigerians all of the information they need. Mr. Martin Anova is a petroleum engineer, so you understand why he's passionate about that sector. He's also a former presidential candidate, National Conscience Party (NCP). Also had a run with the Action Alliance. I wonder, are you planning to run again? Well, politics you don't retire. Okay. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Mr. No Honorable, thank you so much for your time on the program this morning.